Gives him a lot of push and tempo. Um, really it does seem viable, like you kind of try and beat the TB's timing. DK is just also still okay. Like giving Death Prophet that oh, kind of a fire versus TB early. where you want right. to, when you want to play Death Prophet mid. And stun versus Puck. There's always a potential for like a Bloodseeker if they just want a carry that can get involved if they are looking for a carry. Yeah. Well, I was thinking the Drow. Drow is actually sick. If you're able to just keep the TB in place, you could maybe like drag the rest of the You can keep your distance from Razor and lane. You can rip through Terrorblade. The only thing you have to worry about is Clockwork Puck. I feel like that mid game gets weird. I thought they just wanted the Puck matchup. Yeah. yeah, I personally think TA safe lane is okay here yeah. if they have like a bit yeah. in mind they want. Yeah, yeah, like, because mama. I'm expecting something like an Ember, like a Zeus yes. kind yeah, of yeah. spirits, oh. right? Like, I'm on the same page. Yeah, Ember's pretty nice. I can see nice. that for sure. I can still see that Conquer. It would be uh, any of these things. It's GBK. I, are, I mean, that's probably why this pick's taking four so long, right? Dude, I think it's Drow. <laughs> <laughs> like, GBK wants it. And it's a knot breaker. I think we're all wrong. High fives around. Who is it, Drow? Ramsey's is back. Very nice. <laughs> Who did he pick? It's a dog huh? breaker carry. Who did he play and then right. he picked it after? Was that Navi? Gaming. Yeah. Right. If this goes past 40 oh, minutes, it's it. over. <laughs> I think I've seen this story before. <laughs> <laughs> so far, all the games we won by, like, who has that better late game? Right. Seen the story before and I didn't like the ending. It's uh, Dawnbreaker fell off very, very quickly in a game. It was, uh, I believe, versus OG that the team picked uh, Dawnbreaker on that position one, and they, then they just managed to maneuver around her early game presence by dodging those ultis. And Spirit have been so no. good at defending their <laughs> high ground and just objectives in general. Like this is an outsider's draft that can snowball, take every Roshu in the game, but it requires uh, like flawless the void Spirit. I feel like outsiders this? are a team that can't sure. hit that yeah. execution, though. I feel I'm gonna very fall good on my about knee them. Again. Like, you're not super relying on this Dawnbreaker. There is a Beastmaster, there is a TA. You have a lot of semi carries, a lot of people to rely on. Well, it's looking like we're pretty split here as far as who we want to take this game number three. We got our casters, Lyrical and Trent. Oh, I mumbled that a little bit, but it's all good. It's game number three. We're hype. Take us away. It is all good, Nikki, and we are hype. We are so yes. ready for this one. I can't yeah. wait. Ooh. I love Dawnbreaker. Well, we've been prepared for this uh, as we get to cast the Eastern Europe quite a bit this year. Ramsey's had one particular series where they lost game one or game two to a to a Dawnbreaker, and then uh, he had the good pleasure of then immediately playing Dawnbreaker after and then being interviewed by us. And he had a lot to say about Dawnbreaker. Yeah. Not not a fan in the sense of just like, man, this hero is so, he died like, what, four times in latest Juggernaut insane. or something? It was, it was bad. Awful. And then he just played Dawnbreaker next game at once. So, uh, it, that's that's kind of the story of the hero. Yeah, it's just really, really good in the laning stage. But we've actually seen this matchup versus the Razor yeah. before, and it didn't go well. No, it didn't. It can go really back and forth. You get caught up, you get lost. It's a problem. But do you remember why it but didn't go well? Why didn't it go well, Trent? Because there was a Nyx's oh. ass with a spiked carapace, and that's not there this time. So will they be able to interrupt the ability to escape from the link, or will she get away every time with her hammer? You're doing a lot of movement over Question. there. Let's get it. I gotta get it in. Well, the camera's I'm still here. Three. Just take us away. Just go. No one. Prepare for <laughs> Get ready for this. Uh, game number three. So much caffeine. I love it. It's 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 the amplification that we need. The real reason was because I, the, my headset was falling off. I had to adjust it. So I need to get off camera for a second there. But now I've spoiled it all, which is perfect. Thank goodness they didn't hear any of that. <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, Mitch uh, does have his ward already placed down with yeah, those starting TV, right? boots sure about on the Skywrath Mage and getting down one very oh, quickly. Practice. See yeah, if they can uh, manage to deward it anywhere. Oh, and now he walks back in afterwards, <laughs> pretending he doesn't have one. Love it, love it, very good. Image knows what's up. And you can see there a very different win rate disparity. Radiance 37% and 70% on Dire. She's got a nice win rate on the Dire, though. 30 seconds. Well, if go. only they were playing Dire. Uh, we'll see if it makes a difference or not. As the wraparound, Dakota's down there. They ping. They know they're over here. Oh, who's coming up to high ground? Who, who's walking away? Oh, Wait, Dakota. Dakota, don't take another step. It's terrifying over there. Right, that was away. kind of insane. I hope they didn't hear me. Probably not. <laughs> over to the side. Yeah, he's going to get caught. That's a bad assault. Koshka runs him down in Toronto, Tokyo, the one that picks up the kill, but that might mean all four bounty runes going the way of outsiders. I guess they didn't know, huh? No, I guess not. <laughs> all right, well, in, and we'll see if he manages to get out. There is a, there is a battery assault. No, he's away. They so can't catch up to him. Well, well, he has battery assault, though. Well, that's true. So if he goes for a TP, you see. I guess that's fair. But now he has to guess. Which way is he going? <sighs> Oh, oh, 
and it's broken. All right, there you go. So even though uh, outsiders do manage to get four bounty runes, it will be Team Spirit. That was so great. find two kills. He does have Grave if he wants to skill it up, but that would Don't brief do that. his game. Dude, they are just taking a walk together. He is taking a long walk. <laughs> it's going all around the world here. Buying oh, so much left, space. Right. Run, get out of there one more Should time again in a second battery show. assault. Uh, that does it? mean that at least it's one of these lanes die. down bottom, they've been able to zone it out. DM gets a good start. And he's <laughs> Claps like, yeah, that's great. That's great. I have no HP. <laughs> I hope you'll be coming back with a salve from that first blood. Please. I feel like I'm owed. Indeed, he will be. Yeah. Salve picked up by uh, by Maposhka here to bring home. Unfortunately, it was Claps' own hard-earned goal to have to spend. Very frustrating. Um, so yeah, that actually ends up not favoring them at all. The the early rundown over there. A little bit tough. Let's see if we end up making up for it in a little bit here. Yeah, they also, of course, didn't get any control over the camp, so the pole is there from Yam, which describes the single range creep to deny that and bring it closer to the safe lane tower and to Yamich. Continuing to keep that little pull alive here, so uh, definitely an opportunity to go for a kill here if they want to. We'll keep our eyes on it as uh, up top Mira is getting some pressure back onto DM. And yeah, the disarm is there, throws out the hammer, a little bit of a slow on the Maposhka. Can't, you can't use that unless they pause. That's a good point. That, that's, there's a rule on that. I mean, technically there's not, but you know, it's, it's the morals of the moment. Mm -hmm. So. Up top, Hakoda trading hits there with Mira, still eating through that poison touch, and they did manage to connect the pole. Yeah, DM's got a, got a couple of creeps in behind the tower right now, so they're just sort of dodging. Uh, I mean, Yaro is level three at this point, so part of that again because of Mira's little journey uh, around the backside of the map there. So early two points in the meta, kind of scary to contest up there with DM and Hak uh, Hakoda, so just chill behind the tower right now. Yep, and they get level three onto the Beastmaster with the wave pushing in again. So down bottom, Ramses. So far, nine and six versus the eight and four. As you mentioned, much better this lane matchup when you don't have to worry about the Nyx Assassin. It goes immediately yeah. onto the Razor. Collapse is taking a lot of damage with the Battery Assault. Is it going to be enough? I don't it think so. It though. But Poshka, I, I guess the damage was probably there from the damage anyway, and then if you cogs, you're probably trapped in there, so I kind of get True. it, but... Uh, not committing at all there from Voshka. The danger is that when he comes back, you have a Mango on Dawnbreaker. They can yeah. still get pretty aggro. Uh, the Razor might be in a lot of trouble here. I feel like the cooldown at level 2 could be like 30 seconds, and this spell would still be terrifying. Yeah, it's, and it's 16 way seconds. strong. It's so scary to play against. Voshka going to get a little bit of pressure there onto Ramses, who will save his mana this time. Not opting to turn. He's still not getting control over this camp, though. Anyway, since it did spawn even just that first time, right? And he keeps doing these smaller pulls, so he's not wiping it out. Now they're going to get a big old pull off here. Good to see GPK in there. Oh, that's also. nice. That's nice. Oh, Ooh. danger, danger. Still hanging on to that fairy fire, but 28 and 2 versus the 20 for Puck. Toronto Tokyo is not having a good time in this mm -hmm. mid lane. Yeah, and this goes back to the way that they prep this whole thing um, through the draft from outsiders, right? Getting this TA nice and early. Sure, it's kind of risky to show it early, but because of this new hybrid Templar Assassin that we have these days of the ability to go safe lane or mid, Whoa. and always having that option versus the pocket, <laughs> it's just so early. Oh my god, dude, he is getting in his head. He brings the Dazzle mid, tips him as he doesn't get a water rune, has to buy a salve, and then also glyphs the wave so he gets another range creep deny. Like, GPK is just a bully right now. Yeah, they're just shutting down any options for this puck right now. And, uh, you know, DM's just surviving through. He doesn't need the assistance to that point. He got up to the helm. Yeah, this is this is very tough. Meanwhile, Ramsey's is trying to bait high fives down bottom. Just saying, oh, did you, did you want to come to lane? <laughs> Not so much. A couple punches. Akoda in trouble. Yabro able to come on in for the kill. So Team Spirit make a little bit of an example in that top lane of As down bottom, Ramsey's level four tries to clear through the uh, pull action that was coming his way. Does have the soul ring soon to be flying out. Oh my god, GPK just keeps hitting these side blades too. Uh, Toronto Tokyo is just he's I getting mean, work. When the bottle's in the backpack, you know, you get the branch in there trying to help out. Good cogs pushback. A couple more right clicks coming from the image. Meanwhile, Akoda has made the move back top of zero. Able to clean up. So in spite of the replay, or is he just dying again? I mean, that's pretty much it, right? 
has the moves on yeah. through. The orb is out. Oh, there's a battery, or rather a rocket flare that came in there too, it looked like. But you can see that outsiders, I mean, already just having a really, really good time in the mid lane. Puck gonna need to sort of catch back up with some rotations maybe around this level six. Yeah, and the last hits though down bottom at least still going relatively okay for the Razor. I'm sure having to spend some on regen is still gonna hurt you a bit in terms of your overall net worth, but now the fear is there with the soul ring, right? You can just spam like this, throw some spells a bit willy-nilly, and there's just no recourse. Oh, it's so much pressure. They have level five. The Bassy aura even too. Although this is nice. Yeah, get a little bit of punish there when the hammer was down. Maybe make a move now that it's already used, but we'll see Mira TP out, denies the haste room beforehand, so. Of course, the downside that Stormbreaker has is that when you're missing that damage, your Stormbreaker might be pushed. No! Interrupted there before he gets the last hit out. Ramsey's now too far forward. They can punish him. Ramsey's in trouble as Collapse comes in for the kill. Mapochka and Collapse working together for that perfectly. Mapochka doesn't have another cooldown for any extra battery assault or cogs. I, am I crazy? Does it not work like that? I, I can't believe he went for that starbreak when he's missing 55 damage. That yeah, was uh, a bit told. Damage also gets punished. Oh, that. Oh, that. Yeah, high five the tower on your way out of there. That's really well done. So does come back to lane now with full mana yeah. regen. Yeah, so the point there, in case you're, maybe you're new to Dota, you don't really understand, basically, he, he just wants to die. He's still gonna give up a gold bounty to the enemies, but he's not giving them any experience, because they're dead while he's just doing that. GPK. He needs to run away. That, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. That was not how that was supposed to go. <laughs> well, GPK. It uh, looks like uh, Toronto is going to get the revenge there, even getting the kill despite all those other heroes being there. So, recovering into the lane, still a little bit behind the Templar Assassin, but obviously Puck not needing quite as many items to get going into a game, just looking for that key item in the Witchblade to get things moving. But, the uh, and again, the reasoning for Claps 2 is that like this Razor, they want to die because they want to come back with full HP and full mana, just like keep contesting in the lane. You don't want to just, right. surviving isn't always the best situation. So, eight minutes coming up here soon, and GPK, after a bit of a feed in the river, uh, is going to head on back to his triangle, get some farming on that Ancients, and maybe stack up a couple of camps along the way as well. But six is there for the Dawnbreaker if they want to make a move. Likewise there for DM. Yeah. Killing but also farming the wave. Efficiency with his axes. Yeah, and that's something about uh, TB where they're always willing to go to the jungle early. It's a matter of survival a lot of times, but they're also just so fast at farming the jungle that they can do so many tricks and, and plays and stuff and sacking camps that in the end it's it's basically just as efficient. Obviously it's full of safety. You don't have to like, use as much brain power. Just insulting carry players, I guess, right now. But uh, <laughs> it's gonna let you go. Mira, Mira just has to suffer the consequences of being given a lane to hold. Snapfire can be a strong hero at this, but it, you know, you're no wyvern or something. But no, it's true. And if you do get dove under tower, there's not much that you can yes, uh, make use of, particularly when the Ramses is there with a, well, a guardian. I mean, you're go. scary with TPs, though, right? That's true. TPs and yeah, the cookies well, and the slow. Speaking of rotations, Toronto Tokyo tried to make a move there under Ramses, but couldn't quite catch up to him in time. Yeah, likewise, kind of leaving the lane because Dombreaker can sort of do that too. True. Radiance Down here, farm it up a little bit here, attack. but uh, meanwhile, GBK was also farming pretty heavily. And those ancients that you saw getting a big stack there and keeping neck and neck with Terrorblade right now. And Mira gonna get dove underneath the tower. Tries to get away, has another couple punches from the pine cone, hides off in the trees, and actually manages to escape down bottom. Ramses gets ran at. Coil is out, and that is a kill for Toronto Tokyo after the early pressure that was mounted at him. He is really pulled back into this game. Yeah, I guess Ramses is very bold to TP back to that tower after farming in the jungle with zero mana. He used like his last 75 mana basically to TP in there. So you've got the soul ring sure to work with, but that's going to reduce a lot of your options, right? With the solar guardian escape or something like that. And you can see the pressure Team Spirit wanted to place on this bottom lane because they've left this Observer War here to try and account for anyone Radiant's underneath this tower coming tower through. So attack. they're going to keep this pressure Dyer's up, Claps returns, and just attack. saying that uh, we want this fully abandoned. But likewise, Beastmaster doing Beastmaster things. This Radiant side Beastmaster very capable of taking Dyer's that top, top tower, tower and wanting to move your way into the dire side of the map and take this territory. And look at the vision they have as well in that dire jungle. It's all Radiant's over the place. They've spent a ton of time attack. over here. And while that is very scary, uh, the one other thing that they've got going on the side of Team Spirit is the level sixes. Clockwork mm. hits it before 10 minutes. And meanwhile, Snapfire also
also is going to have hers available with the tome picked up. Yep. So this is kill potential city. A anybody on the map that gets caught in this combo dies. Yeah, that's the thing about Sapphire that I love right now in this patch is that like even though they've nerfed the damage over the Marmor Kiss over time, I feel like she's the best here for coming back. And well, right under that hawk, they go for the smoke. So they definitely don't want this on outsiders, and they know exactly what the plan will be. It'll be chase down DM and get a free kill. Radiant damage TP's Australia. out already. Yeah, nice stuff there. DM, I mean, he's still in the danger territory. Do they go for a Dark flare? Nah. Scanning. And the scan connects. Yeah, the but scan, it's... and they're gonna like, oh, is he running here? Yeah. The smoke's not popping. <laughs> That's a little bit unfortunate. DM. Yeah. War drop down. But they won't find oh, that's, that's anybody for the kill. Too. I mean, it might come into play later. True. So it's not, not too big of a deal, but. So three to eight. Again, that first gank from uh, Team Spirit not bearing fruit. Outsiders will head back up into this area and maybe even go for a smoke themselves. Well, you gotta be waiting for a solar grinding play at this point, right? Like, you think the Ramsey want to make use of his ulti and playing that uh, Spectre like hero? Roar into Solar Guardian seems pretty frightening. Mitch still not level six. Maposhka heads over this direction. Yes, it does. A2. It's a lot of them. There is DM in the area. But Vision, Cookie runs away. Meanwhile, the Mystic Flare is out. Maposhka down low HP, but they get the kills on the Helm of the Dominator. Bear's like diving in there. I'm coming. I'll share the damage. Collapse could care less. <laughs> it's a classic. But. A don't quite get a kill does reveal and they get the vision taken away after. Yeah, speaking of vision, GBK working in here, setting down some traps, of course, with the Deso. Yeah, as a possessed mask, might want to start putting a couple traps near that Roche pit as well. It definitely is a case where outsiders have uh, drafted for this vision again, whether it's the Hawk, whether it's the creep sending sent around, or those traps. They should always be able to find that first jump, unless, of course, there's a flare coming out from Oshka. No, on the other side, though, you also have the best first jump in the game, it feels yeah. like, these days, in that Puck, too. So, uh, we've seen a lot of Puck versus Dawnbreaker. They, they have a very interesting relationship, I would say, because uh, it tends to be when you're initiating as Puck, you're obviously uh, looking for these coils, and you, it takes a, a generally a little bit of time for your teammates to get there, and that's when that Solar Guardian can come through and try and get the big saves. Push but at the same God. time, it makes it so you can gank the Dawnbreaker when she's by herself and bring your teammates for those first kills. As Toronto Tokyo is hunting with the Invis rune now, he's looking for Ramsey, but he's not here. It's the rest of the team. Up top for Outsiders is trying to find uh, Team Spirit. Yeah, they, they get a couple pings and they think he's over there maybe, but won't be able to get any kills in the dire jungle either. DM makes the move over with the help and, of the Dominator. And the Poshka, like, still here with Hookshot, yeah. with the Snapfire here. But he's here. underneath the Eagle, the, 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 the Hawks there. And the Lord. All out. Silence, baiting some extra energy going in his direction. Hookshot is there. Samich yeah, is going to get punished and killed. Meanwhile, back towards mid, they find the coil. Connection, burning down GPK, the heal, the brave. It's all there to try and keep that TA alive. And she will manage to escape, but DM, he might not be so lucky getting burned well, down bit by bit. Chase with the puck doesn't jaunt. Ramsey's was there. Be a bit too dangerous for Toronto Tokyo to chase Radiant's that far. But with a quick Radiant little couple kills, Team Spirit happy to take mid. I am so surprised that he survived there. Misses on the hammer. No illusions hit, but the axes coming out from GM can start to get a bit scary. Spray and the troll. They're a bit far forward. Yadaro very, very low and has to be wary of that amped up damage coming this direction. He's just going to Sunder Mira. <laughs> Thanks for the help, buddy. Gets out of there. Raise the dead, DM. More skeletons. That's true. <laughs> He's suddenly obliterated by the fuck. That's some good damage on him, though. The rally. And with the Deso on GPK, they're comfortable moving on in. Hook shot. Again, finding that Skyrath Mage. Mystic Flare. Oh, it's Collapse trying to escape. The Cookie did a good job of keeping him alive through that. Ramses hammers forward. Collapse tries to get a little bit of separation. And there is the Quail laid down. Ramses super low on this Dawnbreaker. DM trying to finish off that Razor. Oh, oh, but it's hammer not back. enough. They're in a little bit of a dangerous spot. Rams, oh, great coming out at the last second. Hakoda keeping him alive. Toronto Tokyo chasing him, wants to kill so desperately. There's the Illusion Rune. Dodges with the Luminosity. Extra damage on the Illusions, heals him up. How is he alive? Like, honestly. Oh, that is true. That's something we've seen several times, this Luminosity versus these Illusion Heroes. It, it's like when you go statistically to the heroes, the Dawnbreakers are good again. It's just like Illusion Heroes like run the chart right now. 
mean, it's it's obviously going to be a, a little bit of a scary one, but uh, now if outsiders can go on in and take down this Roche, you know, such a big moment for it, It's all the troll. That's they true. Somehow lifted up that fight battle scar. Warrior of the Dark Troll Summoner rallies the troops to an Aegis at 15 minutes. The Deso, this is the dream Templar Assassin game. It doesn't get much better than this, right? You have your Blink Dagger, your Deso, and you get that Aegis. So you get your two greedier items, and you're blinking your Deso, and the safety of this Aegis while you try and farm towards your Shard and your BKB. It doesn't have the Aegis, though, DM. And he's gonna get punished, and this is the combo we've been waiting for. Decides not to roar. It's so free. That's, if you can find somebody alone, they're dead. I mean, is no still smoked. That's, yeah. that's you know. <laughs> Or sorry, Mira, obviously, on the snap. Still, still, still smoked. You can be nice and far away when you fire those kisses. And those are the types of plays that you need to make to try and wait out this Aegis. Because as you mentioned, the, the TA mm -hmm. having this now, it can set up the next couple of minutes to all go that direction for outsiders. And yeah, that's just crazy. I, I had to check he didn't have a Tumblr toy or something. <laughs> he's, he just, he's, it up here. he's in no man's land. TA. What, what's he doing? Ah, uh, I don't know. Oh, he's going on Maposhka. That's kind of a cool little play if he can get him. Tries to escape, tries to get out. Dude, that was get wild. Out with the battery assault. But they make it work. That was so bold. I mean, I guess because there was no hook shot, so he's not that worried about just being calmed down instantly, and he just thinks that the protection of the slow guardian will be there. But like that, that's like a Bane style play that you that's see, true. right? You see that from a Skyrath Mage is really interesting. It's so dangerous with no possible sense of escape, but. Just feeling confident, knowing that they have this Aegis right now, probably feeling like Team Spirit ha have this idea of trying to split the map up right now and won't necessarily all be together. Any of these moments where you can buy time, uh, or rather cut down on the amount of time that you're on the map shutting down where Team Spirit can farm is really good. This Terror Blade gets to the late game, has all those big items that we've seen in the last couple of ones. Yadaro is going to be a menace. And Outsiders wanting to keep this one on the shorter side. 17 minutes in, next round of neutral is going to spawn. And again, the winner of this game is going to be guaranteed all the way through the TI, not having to play through those Eastern European qualifiers, which have just been so deadly. Oh, good sentry here. Gonna catch that on the low ground. Does drop the OBS. There was a courier there, but yeah, they don't care. Okay. Okay, goes in. Good silence. Saw him getting the college pushback. The turn though on the top side means Ramses is dead. So they go on one, they get lost on another. And Team Spirit do know that there's a ward up here. They saw him take one down and put another one up. He just got cookie stunned into a complete blow up there from Yadro. Ramses not looking the most comfortable on this Dawnbreaker. BKB. Next on the docket for the TA, as Yadro keeps building, trying to get into a Scotty next. Be really devastating against the range hero like GPK. All right, well, in seven seconds, Solar Guardian's back up, so they can continue to pressure right here and just know they're going to have that option of the global assistance come through. Let's see how much more they want to try and get out of this Aegis. Still in the two minutes, it can be tough to get the tier two towers with this Aegis. Unless you're like really far ahead, and especially when there's some some excellent punish if you overextend from the puck and from the snapfire. Finds it again. Maposhka silence. GPK chasing Mystic Flare. Is it enough? Doesn't quite look like it. And with collapse nearby, they don't feel confident chasing all the way over that direction. They've been playing around this vision really well. While well, Toronto Tokyo is going to head on into the Radiant Jungle and try and get some farm Radiant for himself. Yeah, I don't know. They were holding the territory, but they're not really accelerating their lead right now. No. For outsiders, I don't know how great this feels. I mean, it's scary, particularly if you're not getting objectives. DM's going to push up top. Amira's here. The Helm of the Overlord, that might be the real ticket that they've been waiting for. Yeah, that is true. That, that gives you some serious siege potential here. Pushing them all the way back. There's Dyer's still the threat of the hookshot into the kisses. There's no doubt about that. It's still very difficult for them to actually reach that far back and stop. They don't have a great answer there. Dyer's this time is so nice. Dyer's tower dead. Tower Tier two fallen. done. Yeah. Outsiders still very split up. GPK runs in Toronto, Tokyo. Still no shard there. They're all Radiant's nearby. GPK in trouble. Finds Mahoshka wants to go to him. There's no silence this time. All of the damage being drained. They're going to Solar Guardian right into just a 
a world of hurt coming from the Snapfire, but Ramses oh, trying nice to finish off laps can't do it. Yadro in the meantime, they find a quick kill onto two with both supports dead, but no dazzle. Do Team Spirit feel confident taking this fight underneath the tower? He gets that oh, no, oh, but a side oh, oh, hit. Oh, oh, for GPK. That was very nice. Oh, I thought he was getting away too. Toronto Tokyo taking a beating from this big golem. Wants to get out of here and TP out. Ramsey's hammer from downtown. Not enough. Can't quite connect for the kill. Oh. I feel like that had to be single digits. It was close. It was very close. Well, that was 42 HP. It wasn't that close. I mean, you know, <laughs> what's, what's that even? Well, you can see the, the way that these fights can go. I mean, even with something that looks potentially as bad as that, you know? Yeah. Like, this, this confidence by GPK is crazy, Frank. He's just jumping right instantly. He's trying to blow up this clock, right? Forcing up bad hook shots, which it takes away a lot of potential from Mira as well on the Snapfire, right? And so the Solar Guardian is always going to protect him. The fact that you can actually force away a collapse during a link is terrible. Oh, that is not good for a Razor's game plan. GPK just walks over to Mira and kills him. Oh, yeah. Now we get to see the sweet scythe again, though. It was very nice. I mean, side, side blade, same thing. Attack. Look at it. It was so close. Oh, jeez. That is nasty. Oh, I thought he had it. Uh, I think he did too. 3,000 gold lead. Outsiders starting to get this ball rolling underneath him. Yeah, and then imagine Ramsey's coming through in the same situation, but with a halberd, because that's what his next item choice is. Really try and play. I mean, it's such a good game for him, right? Like, dealing with a, a Terra Blade and a Razor. Hell, even pucks up right foot these days with Witch Blade. GPK is the real carry in this game. Everything for your TA. Make him big, make him strong. Is he on a, Is he on the clock, though, you know? I don't know. I mean, it's always a question. You keep it in side blades like that, maybe not. Yeah, heroes tend to not fall off as hard as they used to just because of, obviously, we have all these talents as well as uh, some crazy animizations. We got neutral items, so things are, are not quite as, like, win lane, lose game as they were before. And, and we've seen that a lot for Templar Assassin and all the various ways she can play. We've, we've definitely credited some teams with, like, the uh, the early Aghanims that we saw the other day from, I believe, it was Thunder Awaken. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. Very very good global potential. Uh, GBK taking the more standard route of a hero here. Oh, yeah. TP's out down bottom before they get into harm's way. It's DM Amich made the move down bottom, and Team Spirit going to attempt to retake their jungle, it looks Radiance like. All right, so this attack. is a extremely telegraphed lineup, kind of on both sides, but, like, outsiders have one way that they want to play with this game, right? They want to get the second Roche. They want to use that to then push into the high ground. That will be the plan. So if you're Team Spirit, you'll be thinking that we're, we got to play this part of the map. we got to get some good vision here. we got to get sentries down. we got to get rid of all these traps because we, we can't afford to be seen. And one of the main problems would be that shard from Beastmaster, but not actually opting into it quite yet. That, I feel like that's always what wins second Roche. It's true. Yeah, the little Hawk takedown, really annoying to play into. But this is the other thing, right? Just keep sending these big old ancients at the towers. And you have to show up with numbers to really deal with this. Building. Still being hit. That's Hawk. Spotting Tron. Oh, spotted the smoke. He just saw them all smoke behind the tower right now. Team Spirit. And they pinged it out too. They're so they want to so sit safe. on this high ground. They're playing it so safe. <laughs> Look what Ramsey said. I will find the jungle. I'm over here. Until there is a fight. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I'll press out, I promise. So how do you nullify that Solar Guardian coming in if you're Team Spirit? I mean, one thing that teams do is they'll hunt the, the Dawnbreaker, yeah. right? That's a classic play. It's like going after the Spectre since they're going to join anyway. Oh, hold on. Toronto Tokyo now jumps in. Silence on the two. Coil on the two. Tries to jump away. The Solar Guardian. And now the Kiss is down yeah. on top of both of them. That, that might be a good shot. Oh, up meta, though. Forces out the grave. The runaway. Yamich in trouble. Nowhere to go. He's dead. And they keep this fight going. Everybody's low on the side of Outsiders. Toronto Tokyo still hunting with Mira in the back. Oh, it's a quick Roche. It's fun. They're already ready. With the meta being Radiant's popped, this is so good for Team Spirit if they check. Now, of course, the Radiant, no. Right. Right. Invis, 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 Invis. Cookie bought the blink. Hey. <laughs> oh, he's too good. He's the, ready. There was a Radiant off sentry on that, that bottom rune. I'm not sure if that spawned it, but... They go and check Roche. Ah, uh, Team Spirit. I mean, it's dangerous. Do they have meta. sentries as well? They have sentries. They can oh, no. Trap. TP's away. Oh, and now they're going to see that Roche is up. Yep. <laughs> Well, at the very least for Spirit, they know that uh, it's there and are going to have to come back to defend against it. I mean, they're running low on time as well. Yeah, I don't know if they could have gone so anymore. Maybe if they went instantly after the Tier 1, it's a possibility. But of course, Outsiders, one goal in mind. 
it will be this Roche, and uh, the Mortimer Kisses are still down for another 45 seconds. He's a very powerful tool this fight, obviously. Jumps in. Trying to delay this. Yeah, just being a new Roar. On the one here and caught. They were not ready for that one at all. Maposhka does have the hook shot, but doesn't want to have to use yeah, it. They actually envisioned that bottom of Yadro running through. They knew they weren't full numbers. Has to back out. Just taking so much damage, dude. Look at these creeps. They're beating the crap out of Maposhka. Get away. The ice ball. GPK finds one. Still looking and have a couple side blade connections onto that razor. The PKB is used to a lot of these elements taken down. Ramsey's into the finish of the cash. He's over the hex. The hex, the jump. <laughs> Ramsey's a swing at ghosts. All this fucking space shifted. Yeah, it happens. Oh, what a hero. Puck is insane. Did get clipped though by that dazzle uh, hex, so need to be wary of that. Right, they'll send in. Terrorblade Illusion, Scout that Roche is still there, and a couple quick D-Wards from Collapse. Are they gonna chase this Razor? Cookie is getting a little bit of play, but the hook shot on the other side. They find this Skyrath Mage, he's gonna bring him down. Oil now, on a GPK. Ramsey tries to escape, it's a Soul Guardian, but not that far away, but it's enough to get some separation. GPK isolated the hex, but four staff, chase down, looking for more. Yadro could be here, a couple of punches, but the Grave is there. GPK, he's gotta run away. Can he get out? Oh, a couple more rounds in the fright clicks, and he will fall. Radiance Mira, the first to fall this fight, then comes back with a huge four staff save on the class, and then the cookie combo to GPK. So big, so huge. They have buybacks on the CA. It's still going into the hunt. Dude, Dazzle is still so good, but I don't know if this is gonna matter. Ramsey's in trouble. TM does try to kill him. He actually gets away. Get the illusion rune on Puck. <laughs> Manages to escape. <laughs> there was a roar up top, though, a little bit up in the ancient, so they managed to get a kill there. Onto Maposhka. That is a dieback for him. He still has meta on Yadro, of course. The start uh, of the meta but bit. they have the Hawk in there. They see all of this. This is really scary. Do they decide to go in for this? Yeah. Collapse. Oh, nice angle. Chase, chase. Four Great. staff away. That was wrong. Tokyo's still hunting. And Yadro not feeling confident to go all the way in until they kill off that creep. But this bird, it's giving them all the vision in the world. Uh, this fight gets really tough if TA comes back. They just keep throwing out that hammer and he can't stay here. He's halfway through meta right now, too. It's, it's not going to be enough. He's losing his strength. Surprise. They can't do it. They've got to back out, but you can't afford to give up the second Roche either. Oh, we reset, we go again. <laughs> That's where we're at now. All right, so things didn't start out too well for Outsiders in that last fight. Uh, no offensive Solar Guardian, or, or even like a defense one. It said it was literally a just for me trying to escape situation. 60-40. Uh, that seems, I'd say, fairly accurate at this point. If they can just like secure this Roche, keep going, I can understand that. Bottle DD. TA's in a great spot. A lot of this game for Team Spirit resting on the shoulders of Yodoro. How close are we here? We've got cookies back up for Mira. Hook shot available. Yep, they're out of there. Still on cooldown for 80. They're TP back over. Cookies starting to lay out on top of all of them. Yadro has the reflections ready to go. Ramsey's still down to half HP by virtue of these illusions getting thrown out. But the heals are there from Dazzle. Another run of reflection. Jump back line. Toronto kill found him. TM caught. Can they kill him off though? Good dodge away and the disarm. They got it. Hubbard on the TA. She's got to back out. His team doesn't have anywhere left to go. Gonna stay inside that Solar Guardian. Toronto Tokyo thinking about a chase, but it's a bit too far. They're still playing back and forth. That's DD and BKB chase for collapse, but a miss up hill, and now he's in too far. Where's the rest of his team? They're not there. He just died. I have it's yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna send some tips his way. That was not what it was meant to be. Ramsey pulled himself back in. Excuse me? Hammer trying to buy some more time, maybe. The TP out. Ramsey's will escape, but this opens up Roche. 60 seconds, no TA. Back into the pit, meta coming back in 15 seconds. They'll have the damage here from Team Spirit. And what are your options to try and get into this auto play? There's nothing. There's Literally no solar guard yet. Roche fight of their life. I mean, DM's got blink, he's got creeps. They I know, he's feeling real bold. Cool. They can't do it. <laughs> Unreal. Team Spirit, after falling pretty far behind early in a couple of those fights, now get the second Aegis. You know, GPK, he really believed in his chrysalis. That's true. Uh, maybe, maybe it was the, uh, nice, the enchanted quiver as well. Like, he felt like he had that big damage. Yeah. You know, but maybe the times were just a little bit off or something, or maybe he just went up with some misses. Not sure. 
And obviously the, the quiver didn't save him. No. Radiant's that middle second tower hit might have been enough, attack. but... Right. Well, likewise, uh, Ramsey's obviously working on this one for quite a while, getting the halberd as well for that Dawnbreaker here to try and counter a lot of this range damage. This is coming from Team Spirit, so big problem for Yadro because he has no way to deal with that right now. And speaking of those halberds, we saw it in that last fight, the pickup by Collapse. He's been immaculate this entire series. Yep. Really, really good stuff. The Paladin Sword is welcoming out now for Yadro, so... Between this and the Satanic, it can be a very difficult hero to handle. Collapse. Finally pushing a bit of a threat to this DM, and well, they got him back behind. They're gonna chase down and kill this Beastmaster. Mapochka might actually die. Oh, that dog. They survived through that. As they kill off Creep to boot. He was so quick on that force after, uh, after the hookshot, too. Oh, yeah. He knew the block plays were coming out there. I think there was vision in sort of the area, too, and yes. the idea was happening. Pushka will have to head all the way back home because of that and picks up the ceremonial robe. Dying. 31 minutes, 13 to 17 in a series Radiant's that has gone very much back and forth Radiant's from game to game, from minute to minute, it's felt like. And you can see that the, the big numbers that are going to start coming out will be from that TA, from that Terrorblade. Can they find the right targets to stay on target? Yeah, interesting that they went for the shard on Snap too, right? Yeah, out of all their heroes too, because I could see Yadro taking it uh, on the Demon Zeal, but they're just really prioritizing that stun, which, uh, I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, there's not that many BKBs to contend with, right? Uh, That's true. In terms of, like, you only got, what, I think TA and Dawnbreaker, so, like, controlling the supports. Game zone option. Poshka for Snap. Find the image on the back, keeping Ramses under fire. There's that Charged pushback. Stun. Radiant Does get pushed by the Cogs after, so they can't get the full combo in a Goda. He's dead. Ramses also in some trouble, missing a couple kisses, but might not matter. This collapse connects. They forced it. Oh, that was close. Not quite able to get it. I get out there a little bit too fast. And still two minutes left on this Aegis if they want to press a bit forward here on Team Spirit. But again, not having the Demon Zeal, so you yeah, don't have that little bit of pressure on the tower if you want to. They can show up, though. It's meta available. And if it turns into a fight, it won't be a bad one for them. Radiant's Tier 2 tower going to fall. Radiant's middle tower has Are they fallen. really going for more? I mean, this is this would be a bold play. Maybe they're just going to force it back to the base, but if AC is done on collapse, they are confident tower. with this. I mean, they are they're showing on the waves. There is no answer. Team Spirit. They see DM under a war top. They know he's still not there. They can't do anything to defend against this right now. Uh, they're taking one rack. They're going to take more. Hello? Outsiders, you gotta come back home at some point. Ramsey's, he's just going to die. Four staff away, trying to survive. Collapse jumps on him, but is it all a bait? Okay, a lot, a lot of time from him there. DM with the biggest wrap round of all time. Hi, uh, this is very scary. Trying to Tokyo, might get broken. He's thinking about it, looking for a big jump, but they've already taken now. So they know they're picking him. DM, he's gotta get out. Blink away, Toronto, Tokyo's still chasing, but they're getting separated. There's a There's the X. On to Yaro, it won't go anymore. Ramsey's wanting to chase. I mean, getting out of this might be a little bit scary with no more meta. So they coiled out on the DM. It forced him to BKB and TP back home. So no coil, but also no BKB available for DM right now. They can push back outside of the base. The Solar Guardian is there if they manage to get a catch. And so often in these spirit games, what it's been is the decision-making late game. That call to take the tier two to go up high ground, it netted them two Raxes. Yeah, two melees too. Like the, the second lane being taken there is very painful economically for outsiders. They're just going to be on the back foot this whole time now. And as if they weren't already a little bit rushed this game, they now need to push things even faster. And uh, you're tempted to wait till Roche to try and fight for that, but that is at least three and a half minutes away. Oh, and that is interesting. I mean, th this this game is like, uh, again, blown wide open over the last several minutes mm. uh, off the back of this Aegis. And I, I didn't think it was going to be this huge of an opening, but Outsiders unable to deal with people just walking yeah. at their high ground. And Team Spirit just on the brink of being able to go again to TI, the returning champions. Poshka looking cool, calm, and under control. Mm-hmm. Taking a little breather here. We uh, fix a PC issue. Always good. Make sure they're at the top level. That was GPK that disconnected, right? Yep. 
and he has uh, the interesting build right now. He, he went into the Witchblade, and I think that this is, again, that uh, Revenant's Brooch buildup that some people are thinking about as answer to the high armor heroes. Mm -hmm. So we might be seeing some some crazy shenanigans for TA if the game's good yeah, enough. Yeah, it's a great way to get that big nuke uh, potential out there. So we'll see if it's uh, if it is the play indeed. With that butterfly being there on the TB, kind of a different path you can take as opposed to the MKB. And in combination with the Chain and Quiver, it gives you sort of a, a mixed option to deal with this evasion. But uh, the BKB is starting to wear down, of course. Only like seven seconds left on that Templar Assassin now. So uh, Halberd ever as important from Collapse. Likewise, same thing for Ramses as uh, there, there still won't be a BKB on a TB for a very long time. That's right. You got to imagine it's frustrating outsiders after having the game that close and being that far ahead and then in game number two even having a shot at it and now losing out on that Aegis. Yep. Long days, frustrating matches. I really think that the uh, the lack of Shard on DM to me was a big mistake. I, I think rushing in towards that BKB, there was this giant gap where he just wasn't accelerating at a very important time of the game for them. And I think there's a reason why you see that Shard in those cr like crucial moments where you're trying to fight around that pick, because like, how many times were they just under Hawks, you know? That's true. Finding one of those pickoffs, a, a stun randomly here and there, could be the difference maker. Yeah, it's just so much empty net worth when you go for the full BKB and then you don't get it by those big fights when like the game was essentially decided. So if you want the BKB, it feels like they need to prioritize that a little bit more on his hero. Right. Now, the one other dynamic to this that we just saw right there a second ago, Dazzle does change the way that TV plays. Mm -hmm. You know, so often the damage amplification comes from those illusions, spamming them out constantly, and he is going to be able to instantly kill those. Yep. But does he just die to him before it matters? <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's a real question. Is the Toronto Tugger just find you in the back and say, you don't get to play some Dota here today? He needs to get a BKB on that Dazzle or something. I don't know. I mean, speaking of which, I think Yamich really struggling this game to get the the big combos as well, right? Like, had some really interesting stuff where he's, like, playing aggressive and setting up for Solar Guardians in the, the right. earlier parts of this match. But it's gotten to a point now where, of course, sure, you did force the early Yules onto the box. That's always going to be the success of bringing this hero into the game. Between but aside from that, it feels like, uh, the, you know, the, the clutch silences and everything, having a hard time catching onto those. See if he can uh, maybe force something on Toronto to kill this next one. DM spots a couple heroes with the Hawk, sees all of them, and will immediately run away before things get a little bit too scary. But yeah, outsiders, they, they need to buy some more time. Mira is not afraid with that four staff. Are they just gonna go up again? I don't know. I mean, I guess that they probably just play for that next Roche. Although there is some danger of at very least the tier two tower going down. It seems almost assuredly uh, gonna happen now. There's still some heroes in the area after that. If they get spotted right now, I feel like Team Spirit are so down to fight. Yeah, they, they feel so incredibly strong. And they would love an engagement outside the base, I think, right now. Are they like actually the going to go high ground again? Uh, uh, the, uh, outsiders, they're not here. Team Spirit waiting for somebody to show up. Nobody's home. You know, when you, they hit the doorbell and like you can't really hear it, yeah. and you're like, ah, do you think the doorbell works? Because for some reason, we just assume no one's doorbell works. So you knock really loud. Oh, That's what this is. Behind him, there's a smoke up. They're ready to go. GPK is not with the team. He does not want to fight right now. Hoping to buy a little bit more space. He's bought the Revenant's brooch. He's got it done. This could be the answer. Yaro could get eliminated if they can find just a little bit of stuns on him. And he, I mean, you see the item next. The plan is simple. <laughs> we're going to get Revenant's brooch. We're going to get a rapier. We're going to see if we can win this game. That's all that they can really do. And they have to find it perfectly. It's so much damage, it pierces through that evasion. It does everything that you want the TA to do. But can you find that moment? And instead, Toronto Tokyo, they found them! The jump on to both DM, pops the BKB, tries to run away. GPK slowed down, has to blink back. Actually, Ramsey insane blink. In some trouble. How did he find that? It's too good. Like, that right click was so close to tank for Tron Tokyo. He managed to BKB early enough that he's not taking any damage from the battery assault, so he can set the counter, and the opponent doesn't even think to right click. But the problem is, this meta is still going. And another Rax is dead topside. I think he's also losing some. Ramsey's trying to be the force up front. They've got one more Rax. They need a Hawk play here. They need everything. And the Hawk is dead. <laughs> the anti-air. Oh, they were ready. GPK, he just wants to show off his cool new item. He's not getting an opportunity to. The illusions are doing all the work that they need. Here, I'm very happy about the situation. They are not concerned in the least bit. TM just tries to find him. Where's the damage? Do they have enough? It's not there. Victorio turns around. The Satanic is down. It's way too much. Dead on the Beastmaster. GPK just can't find his target. Can't get the angle. Not nearly enough. And GG is called. Team 
spirit, they're going to TI again. With his dying breath, GBK hands it over and says, all right, you got us this time. They might not go for the DPC, but perhaps they'll see them at TI again as Team Spirit, of course, securing their way. Incredible performance from them once more.